Last summer, a clutch of baby crows hatched and fledged from a nest on a building ledge, right in the middle of a busy street in the city. I went nearly every day to film them and captured moments of this crow family as the babies grew up. I didn't manage to get footage of their earlier days, but the footage starts when they are still in the nest and a week or two away from fledging. During the time I was filming them, I also kept notes of observations, which I'll share throughout this video. They are curious and playful even before leaving the nest, watching everything carefully, especially their parents, and using their beaks to explore their environment, which sometimes includes their siblings. Parents drop by regularly to feed the babies and clean up the nest. Crow parents seem to be very quiet during nesting season, and especially when they are close to or attending the nest. I definitely notice a drop off in crow noises in general during the spring. This is likely due to them not wanting to draw attention to their nests. If you have a weak stomach or are eating something, maybe skip the next minute or so. But some bird species have evolved a unique way to keep the nest clean from bird poop. This is crucial to survival because an unhygienic environment can lead to pathogen growth and illness, and the smell of it can attract predators. To combat this, baby birds of some species excrete waste in the form of fecal sacs, bird poop enveloped by a mucous membrane, which is often white, that can easily be extracted by the parents and deposited far away from the nest. In other words, nestlings produce their own diapers along with their poop. They will do this up until the time they leave the nest. I didn't want to stress the parents out, so I either stay far back and use the zoom on my video camera, or if I ventured any closer, I made some peace offerings in the form of peanuts to try and communicate that I was a friend and not a fret. Raising baby crows is a communal effort. Both crow parents, including older adult siblings from earlier years, take part in this, and there is always an adult nearby keeping watch. They seem to take turns guarding and going off to find food. The parents are very vigilant, and the babies are attuned to their parents. At one point, one of the adults gave out one loud call, and the hatchlings all immediately retreated far back into the nest. It also seems that they have an instinct to hide themselves more when the parents aren't immediately around and nearby. Fledging is a complicated and risky process for all birds. The fledging of baby crows can span several days, and in this time, parents have to keep track of where each fledgling is, keep them fed, and protect their still vulnerable children from predators. Fledging crows do not stray far from the nest. They will often stay in trees nearby, practicing, sometimes clumsily, how to balance and fly. They seem to cycle between being very rambunctious and loud, flapping wildly from tree to tree, and totally silent, almost completely hidden in the foliage, and waiting for their parents sometimes taking a nap in the meantime.
During this time period, parent crows are especially territorial, and for good reason. They will call out loud warnings and dive bomb animals much larger than themselves to protect their offspring. In the city, these larger animals are often humans. Adult crows will almost certainly sound out a warning to humans first before diving. They are not diving out of maliciousness, but out of concern for their children. So during crow nesting and fledging season, it's best just to wear a hat or to cross the street if you hear or see parents protecting their nesting area. The adults are also constantly communicating with the fledglings, making what I now think is a characteristic call meant for younger crows. It is rather short and soft, and slightly different than the normal calls a crow would make. The parents do seem to be teaching, or at least encouraging the young ones how to fly. Something I observed that was really cool was what might have been a pro parent doing positive reinforcement teaching. I did see a fledgling on a ledge with a parent perching a bit further away. The fledgling was begging for food, but the parent did not approach them. Only after the fledgling finally flew over did the parent feed them. Crows are social animals and offspring will remain with their parents and siblings for a long time after fledging, often well into adulthood and beyond. This gives them ample opportunity to learn survival and socialization skills. Fledging crows will beg for food long after they leave a the nest as well. You can recognize when they do this through their characteristic not quite mature call and their begging posture when they open their beaks and flap their wings. Crow parents will definitely continue feeding their young for quite some time.
However, most young crows will not start feeding themselves without some encouragement and training from the parents. As they continue to grow older and learn how to forage and hunt for themselves, parents will feed them less and less, and will often snap at them if they continue begging. Crows are curious animals, and fledglings are especially exploratory and playful. This novelty-seeking behavior likely contributes to their intelligence, as well as their long childhoods learning from their parents and their complex social lives. It is always adorable to see fledgling crows in the late spring and summer having just left their nests as they will follow their parents and each other everywhere, picking up and poking at everything they see, all the while periodically cawing loudly for food. Nesting season is special in that crows splinter off into smaller territories where they remain throughout the season to raise their young. But in any other time of the year, all the crows in the area normally fly home to a communal roost every night. Fledglings don't immediately make this journey even after they fledge, and only when they are capable and ready will they and their parents join the other crow adults in the longer journey to the communal roost every night. One day, I saw the whole family flying together up to the top of a residential building nearby and then back to the trees near the nest to sleep. And it was not long after that that the whole family started flying together to the roost with the rest of the crows. I can't tell individual crows apart, but the family is definitely still around in the same area. And I imagine some of them are the same ones I saw grow up last year. Thank you.